A whole bunch of new photos from the set of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker were just released. Let's look at them, shall we? This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello, and welcome to the Star Wars Show, a Star Wars show that, much like episode one, will be divisive at first, but overwhelmingly beloved 20 years later. Wait, we're going to keep doing this show for 20 more years? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, phew. Yeah, our contracts have us doing this for the next 40 years. Wait, what? Yep, let's go to the news. This morning, Vanity Fair released a treasure trove of new images from the set of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. The spread from legendary photographer Annie Leibovitz captured behind-the-scenes moments from the set as well as featuring the landscapes of the Wadi Rum in southern Jordan, which is being used for the backdrop of the faraway planet Pasana. The cover images feature Rey and Kylo Ren on a collision course with a closer look at both fan-favorite characters. Rey is also seen with her staff from The Force Awakens again. We're also given a first look at Finn and new ally Janna, played by Naomi Aki, as they lead the charge against the mechanized forces of darkness atop Orbox, a new horse-like creature featured in the film. Also featured were the Jordanian locals who played the native Aki Aki of the planet Pasana, as well as this shot of Jonas Suatimo, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, and Anthony Daniels awaiting the call to action for what promises to be a thrilling desert chase. Inside of the Millennium Falcon, we're treated to a picture of its original owner, Lando Calrissian, along with Poe Dameron, Chewbacca, BB-8, and newcomer droid Dio. The First Order is well represented as well, with the first look at Anthony's personal hero, Richard E. Grant, Woo! as the Legion General pride alongside Donald Gleason's General Hux. Meanwhile, in the thieves' quarter of the snow-dusted world of Kijimi, we're given our first look at Zori Bliss, the helmeted character played by Carrie Russell, whose motives are as masked as her face. And let's not Ooh. forget about this image of Luke Skywalker in R2-D2, because, as we all know from the teaser, no one's ever really gone. Also included in the spread are behind-the-scenes images of J.J. Abrams and his crew, a watery lightsaber clash between Rey and Kylo, John Williams composing the score, with a bonus image of General Leia in the screen in front of him, and much, much more. Plus, Vanity Fair also produced a special short featurette filled with even more behind-the-scenes moments and imagery captured during the photo shoot. You can look at the images and watch the full behind-the-scenes short right now at StarWars.com SWS. Finally this week, Vader Immortal was finally released, and because we love synergy here at the Star Wars show, Anthony got a chance to sit down with Colin Mackey and Jose Perez III to talk about it. This week saw the release of the Oculus Quest, and along with it, of course, the first episode of Vader Immortal. Joining me now from ILM X Lab, we have Jose and Colin. I got to experience it today. It was amazing. Not just to be in Star Wars in VR, but to be in Star Wars in VR and learning new things about characters and places that we feel like we've known for 40 years. Because we do, we learn some new things about Vader and about Mustafar in this series. Right, and that was something that was kind of ridiculously exciting for us. We'd seen early on, Ralph McQuarrie had some drawings that he'd done for the castle way back in the day. So this was something that had been floating around kind of in the lore for a while. We saw it in Rogue One. You know, it was something that was super exciting for us. It was also the first time we really got to start to explore what Mustafar really is. And there's some really cool story bits that come out over the course of it. We started with a lot of versions of the story as it unfolded. How Mustafar came to be Mustafar. It wasn't always the hellscape that it is now. And what kind of people are on Mustafar and who they are. I like that he says Mustafar and I say Mustafar and I don't know oh. which one's true. No, no, no. Yeah. I think you could say either this, way. You that's either right. way. Yeah, yeah. We're big fans of everybody on the couch saying one word a different way here. <laughs> We're lightsaber. deadly serious about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. I say lightsaber. I say uh. lit saber. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, lit saber. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. I'm going to do that. <laughs> you should. Yes. What were some of the goals that you had with kind of putting people into Star Wars in VR? Well, there are a couple of things that are just those iconic Star Wars moments. One is being on the deck of your own ship. You're a smuggler with your sidekick, ZOE3, we call her Zoe, voiced by Maya Rudolph, who did a spectacular job. Then we laid into the lightsaber and of course meeting Vader. Those were the primary elements of this experience. That's the quintessential experience we wanted to give. Yeah, absolutely. And it's wild to me to just be walking around in Vader's castle. What did you sort of want people to get out of this as an interactive experience? What we wanted to do is want to strike a balance between the story and the narrative we wanted to give, but also the connection you have to the world. And that means picking up stuff. That means picking locks and using lightsabers and battling stormtroopers and really discovering this world. So obviously you get in, you get your lightsaber in the narrative part of the experience mm -hmm. and you do get to use the lightsaber in there. But the lightsaber dojo is a completely separate mode, right? Yeah, it's more of like a meta mode and that's where we go a lot deeper on the mechanics. It's a round based part of the experience, a lot more action, a lot more slicing up training remotes and fighting big scary training droids. I love that because there is something nice about being able to just be like, nah, I just want to swing around a lightsaber right now. Totally. If you pick up quests, you know, for Thanksgiving and you're at your grandma's house and maybe, you know, 
she doesn't want to go through the story at that exact moment. You can do the lightsaber stuff then. And when the night gets a little bit calmer, then you can throw it on and have this nice, cool story experience. My grandma can do the backbend thing that Ray Park does. She should play this. Can yeah. we get video of this? Can Absolutely. we bring her in and it's do It's crazy this? watching right. her do it. All right. So y'all previously worked on the Secrets of the Empire VR experience, which you can experience at The Void. The two connect, they right? They do. They do. <laughs> can you talk about that at all? Or a do you little wanna... bit. So we know from Secrets of the Empire, Vader is looking for artifacts. And that story thread will be expanded on and explained in Vader Immortal. So the first episode is available now on the Oculus Quest for $9.99, but you will be coming to the Rift platforms in the future, right? That's right. Near future. So go check out episode one right now on the Quest and soon on Rift platforms. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. The Star Wars Show presents Everything is Important. This week, Dabusuke. Limited to 17 seconds of screen time, Dabusuke is the happy inebriated alien having a night out at the casino on Kanto Bight. And thanks to the tipsy Dabu shoving BB-8 full of coins because he thought he was a slot machine, the ball droid inadvertently had the perfect amount of ammo to aid DJ in escaping the prison guards and picking up Finn and Rose to make their escape from the Kanto Bight guards. And without Dabusuke, Finn and Rose might not have relied on a mediocre codebreaker that got them captured, giving DJ the chance to double cross the resistance, having the First Order blow away most of their ships, and giving away the resistance's plan to hide. So thanks, Dabu. Without your buffoonery, Finn and Rose may have made their way back to the Codebreaker suggested by Matt, successfully completed their mission, and kept the Resistance alive and well. The First Order salutes you, Dabusuke! With the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge happening next Friday, yeah. we thought it would be fun to find out what you're most looking forward to experiencing on the planet of Batu. We're talking attractions, food, drinks, droids, lightsabers, whatever it is you're excited about, we want to hear it. I'm just going to be swinging around a lightsaber and eating space food That's for cool. hours. I'm just gonna find all the creatures. Great. We wanna know what you're amped about. Use the hashtag Batu for you and we'll feature our favorites here next week. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and have fun this weekend. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you. I was not going to have fun this weekend, but now that you've ordered me to have fun, I suppose I will. That's how it works. Wow, dude, you party so hard. Yeah. Are you having fun? We're having fun, right? We're and having fun, right? And I feel the right? pressure of having fun. We're having fun, right? Does that make you the fun police? Oh! <laughs> kind of, if you're, you if, you're, if, you're, if you're the fun police, you, you have, have to, to tell, tell me. me.